The RuneScape game map is split into chunks. This is a chunk. This is a chunk. This is a chunk. And this is the chunk where I started, Canifis. 15 months ago, I started on my extreme one chunk journey, ticking off chunk after chunk after grueling chunk. I've rolled 52 chunks so far, and today I'll be rolling my 53rd. This roll could result in anything. Of all the chunks I can roll, some would be fun, some would be a 2000 hour death chunk, and some could even result in us being the first extreme one chunk to be able to train RuneScape's favourite skill, runecrafting. <laughs> I'm kidding. That would be awful. Awful. Oh, God. What is it? What is it? What is it? Whoa. Let's not jump ahead of ourselves before we get to that. Firstly, we need to finish the story of how we got there. And to start, did you know this little fun fact? Okay, kicking the video off with the pheasant uh, freaky forester minigame. And here's a fun fact. You don't actually need to kill the one with the tails that it has. So look, he says, get me a pheasant with three tails. There is one of two tails. Kill that one. So we've just killed categorically the wrong one take the pheasant give it to the fella he's happy with that and then we just hop into the portal and away we go with our lamp so if you didn't know that now you do and i guess we'll also get 35 farming you can now grow teak trees that'd be cool i wonder if i'm yeah i'm really far away <laughs> i was like oh i wonder if i could get to fossil island but the answer is definitely not in the last episode, I broke the game. To cut a long story short, I smuggled a monkey out of Trouble Brewing and brought it to Varrock. When dropped and recaptured on my Extreme One Chunk Iron Man account, I was able to get 23k agility and hunter XP per hour from level 1 without leaving my chunks. This was an insane find for all area locked accounts that have notoriously always struggled with agility and hunter. Okay, so I have heard rumour that apparently this is not even 24 hours since dropping the monkey tech video, that apparently monkey tech is now completely broken. So apparently if I drop this monkey now, it's just going to immediately disappear. Uh, according to people that have been trying to do it since. So, in theory, they have patched this this uh, this method. So let's see what happens when we drop this monkey. Does it just immediately disappear? Yeah. It's gone. They've patched it already. It's been 20, 21 hours since I put the video up and they've patched it already. That is so funny. At least I've not copped a ban on either of my accounts though. So that's the main thing because there was quite a lot of comments on the video going, you're so going to get banned. Uh, I was quite confident that I wouldn't because the method was like not really hurting anybody. I did not think they patched it that quickly though. That is very funny. <laughs> The chunk that we are currently in is the Grand Exchange. This chunk looks innocuous, but it is a Goliath. 89 Hunter, 90 Cooking, and 95 Fletching are the main goals. In the last episode, I finished off 95 Fletching and 90 Cooking. However, we still need some Dragon Dart Tips from Dragon Implings to fulfill my 95 Fletching requirement, and also the toughest grind in the chunk so far, 89 Hunter. A grind that has taken me over 300 hours. What in God's name is that thing? <laughs> it looks terrible. Uh, how is that even a thing? That's vile. <laughs> how is that even happening? That is bizarre. Bro, it actually looks like a Dagonoth. That's what the average old school RuneScape player looks in real life. That, that, that's pretty similar to my posture, to be fair. <laughs> okay, and with this eclectic... No. That eclectic impling 
Hunter level is level 89. It is done. Finally, after over two months finding two bugs, <laughs> we are now done with the 89 Hunter. That looks so nice in the skills tab. Oh, you can now catch lucky implings. Finally, finally, right, now I need to actually go and find some Lucky Implings and Dragon Implings. If we take a look at the Butterfly Net, we may in fact be the only Extreme 1 chunk ever to complete the, uh, the Puro grind without hitting a lots stack of Eclectics. And that's because we've had so much help from the boys at Lure Gang pulling in all of the other kinds of Implings, as well as our Imp Defender tech with the Ninjas and the Dragons and the Magpies and our uh, fun times that we had with our monkey. Uh, yeah, a rather impressive looking stack of uh, imps that we caught and we are finally 89 and that is the last level requirement needed in the chunk. Now we just need to hit out all of the RNG grinds, which means we need to get a lucky impling, get dragon dart tips from a dragon impling and also get our pot of flower from the regular imps. But yeah. We're done. It's been a long time coming, and I'm so, so happy to be finished. Okay, okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. God, that feels good. Having the farmer's affinity is just so good. Like, it's definitely worth getting if you're going to be hunting implings in Puro. Because normally, when you entangle over a hedge and someone else is stood right next to it, they'll get it. So beating the bots is just fantastic. 608k made for having the boost. Oh, oh, lucky, 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 lucky. Okay, right. This is the first lucky that I've seen since having 89 Hunter. There is a bot here, but the way that he entangled that nature makes me think that he probably doesn't have the 89 Hunter. Although he's paused. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, this is mine now. This is mine. Unless we can't catch it? <laughs> catch it? <laughs> oh, okay, right, we got it. And that is actually, officially, the chunk goal done. 89 Hunter is not the chunk goal. Catching a lucky impling is. So massive shout out to Basely for getting that uh, lucky impling to me. Maybe we could just finish it all right now. Dragon dart tips from the dragon implings would be awesome. And then... We obviously don't get those, but we did get the lucky impling. Oh God, having this goal done feels so good. Oh, oh, dragon, dragon. Uh. <laughs> oh, oh, that was like one tick. Oh, I feel kind of bad because it's an Iron Man. Oh, right, let's crack it open. Ah, <laughs> not even worth it. Oh, that was so good. He was like one tick from grabbing it, and I just like just landed the entangle. That was so satisfying to see. Okay, so now that we have our lucky impling, we can put it in its rightful spot in the Puro Puro tab. Well, I could if I uh, had a free bank space. There we go. We can chuck it in here. Insert it up here, move the caskets back down, ugly, uh, down like that. And there we go, we've got our lucky impling marking where we are. We've got so many uh, natures and stuff now in the bank. Uh, so I guess, I guess I may as well just open these dragons, right? We've got two dragons in the invent. Can we get the dragon dart tips? Not from that one. Can we get it from the next one? Oh. God, oh, force spawning them is such an incredibly sad activity to do. Come on. Oh, 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 that is a pretty nice start to the day. This is like, I don't know, the 10th world hop that I've done. Oh, it, every time you get a dragon impling, it feels exceptional. Oh, love that, love that. Sorry. You, <laughs> you fucking what? <laughs> but it's about Dragon Implings. That's 1.2 mil made. Surely there's a third, right? 
Okay, so with these two dragon implings that I just got on that last trip, I mean, look at the state of the bank now. Look how many implings we've got. Uh, we have six dragon implings to open. The shot at getting a dragon dart tips drop is a one in 19. Uh, and we've already opened 30, so this is going to take our count up to 36, uh, almost 2x the rate. But surely we're going to get the dragon art dart tips now, right? Wait, wh what's that? Oh, it's an Apex Gaming Bronze, the new budget-friendly entry mode PC from our long-term partner, Apex Gaming. For those on a budget or just getting started on gaming PCs, this is perfect. The Ryzen 3 4100, the new RX 6500T and 16 gigabytes of RAM help give this PC a nice punch while still being less than a thousand bucks. Despite being reasonably priced already, you can get a further 10% off the Apex Bronze and every other PC in the Apex Gaming range by using my code FRAY at checkout. Go to link in the description to check out all the options. Glories, okay, I guess that's useful. Dragonstone bolts. Dragonstone amis. That's basically more glories. Yes! Dragon dart tip on the fourth one. That is massive. Right, where is the feathers? Oh, I've got no feathers. <laughs> where do I get feathers from? Oh, I thought I was going to... Uh... Gonna get that? Oh, for God's sake. Right, okay, that clip's now a bit scuffed, but we got our dragon dart tips, which means we only need to get some feathers and some pots and a pot of flour. And then we are officially done, and we can roll another chunk. So, I need to get a pot of flour to make the summer pie, and I've got a small theory that if someone else uses a Serum 207 on this guy, I should be able to, uh, to use him? No? Okay, so that's him afflicted. Talk to him. Can't be done. Right, someone else has Serum 207 to him. Ah, oh, that's so lame. Yeah, when I speak to him, it breaks him. Ah, oh, that's so tragic. Right, do it one more time. Let's, so let's just 100% check that. Trade general store. Ah, oh, no, they thought of that one. Oh, that's so sad. All right, lame. Okay, let's go kill these chickens and uh, get our feathers. Okay, for some reason I mistakenly just walked all the way to the cannabis farm and forgot that I actually can't access it because I don't have that chunk. And completely forgot that I do actually just have the Lumbridge chicken pen. So I guess I can just kill these... No, I can't because I've got my left click set off. Uh, left click where available, sure thing. Kill the chickens. Grab the feathers. Jobs are good in. Go and give me the feathers. There we go. Right. 15 dragon darts coming in. Oh, look at those bad boys. 15 dragon darts acquired on the account. We can hold them in our invent. We can even throw them. We are balling now. Right. So that is another task done. And the very last thing we need to do is get the pot of flour and create the part summer pie, and then we are done. S sorry, what? As if I've just unlocked like three music tracks. Have I just never walked into this chunk? That's ridiculous. This must have just been one that I just didn't bother coming to explore. As if I've never stepped foot in this chunk. It's quite a big one. Like, obviously, there's nothing I can do here because I don't have a pickaxe yet, but... <laughs> and there it is is the pot of flour that really did not take long at all there's there's always an imp spawning in this corner of the grand exchange so pretty good if you're willing to world hop for imps that took seven kills total to get done and uh yeah i think that's the last thing we need now i just need to make the summer pie or part summer pie you stick that in a pie dish yeah pie shell and then i just need to grab one of my strawberries Drink my chef's delight, boosting me to 95. Use that on there. And there is our part summer pie with our 95 cooking post boost. <sighs> We're done. Literally every single chunk task has been done. 89 hunter, lucky impling acquired. 95 fletching, dragon darts acquired. And 95 cooking, well, 90 plus 5. Heart Summer Pie Acquired. We are officially done!
<laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy. So let's have a quick look at the loot that we've got from this chunk. So there hasn't been t anything too expect uh, no, spectacular compared to at least the Vetion and Rev Grind. I mean, the, the uh, Vetion Tam and the Rev Grind are truly mental. But this tab isn't too bad either for a, for a, a, a number of reasons. So we barely had access to Cosmic Runes before. We only had like three or something. And now we've got 5,800, which is actually really good. We've got our first strength boosting gloves with these red spiky van braces. I managed to get 33 of them. So that's 30, 32 of them I can lose in the wilderness, which is pretty good. We got these mystic boots, which are quite good. We got 5,800 adamant ore, which is like several hundred thousand smithing XP one day. Uh, we got a lot of amulets of power and 11 amulets of glory, which again is actually pretty useful for me. I can just go and lose these amulets of power at something like Vetion or Revs or something. So that's pretty handy. Uh, I got 102 rings of recoil, which can be useful for me if we end up with some kind of tricky PVM or something like that. Uh, and then probably the best thing overall is that we ended up getting all of these herb seeds. Uh, I think pretty much all of these were from this grind. And albeit they're not a lot of XP in terms of farming, they are quite good in terms of like herbs uh, for w one day. We're not too far from the herb chunk, to be honest. Um... You know, we only have to basically get this one and this one, which is one, two, three, four, like four, three or four chunk rolls away, which could happen. Uh, so having a load of herb seeds is pretty good. Um, but yeah, what a chunk. What a chunk. Oh, and 1700 watermelon seeds. That's actually quite massive for farming XP. So one of the other things that you didn't notice in the bank was that I've got 12 medium caskets stacked up. Now I'm going to save 10 of them for the chunk rolling stream because why not? Uh, but that means that I can just open two of them and surely we're going to get spike manacles from one of these, right? Okay, not the first one. Not, not the best. And that one's not the best either. Brilliant. <laughs> Worth doing. <laughs> It took a while, but we finally got there. 89 Hunter is done, and all of the peripheral chunk goals are also complete. It took several hundred hours and was probably the most, like, grueling, hard-on-the-mental-grind that I've ever done, but we made it, and it's time to roll a new chunk. Okay, with eight or nine smithing chunks on the map i've got a feeling that our run of good chunks is going to come to an end but there's not much more we can do other than just click pick chunk and hope for the best so three two one let's go oh god what is it what is it what is it whoa you weren't about to watch me roll a chunk without being subscribed were you Go on, hit the button. It'll make your fourth favorite chunk man very happy. Oh my god! Yes! 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 Oh my god! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! Yes! That is the fattest W ever. Oh my god, that is the second, like, that is probably the second chunk that I wanted the best. Oh my god. Oh, Spoon. Oh my god, we're taking after our, uh, our originator, Limpwort there, who I believe is also in Edgeville right now, so maybe we can meet up with him at some point. But, oh my god. That is huge. I'm literally so happy. And so we have rolled one of the best chunks that we possibly could have rolled. Barrows would have been possibly more iconic, but I think Edgeville is the most exciting that we could have got. So I'm so, so excited to be here. Right, Edgeville unlocked. Oh my god, this is... I'm actually so happy about this, I can't even begin to explain. So, in terms of things that we have in Edgeville, it is a vast swathe of things. Crystillia, one of the main, the main rewards of being here. Absolute madness. Uh, we've got actual men. I think that this might, for the first time, be where we have men. 
I don't think in any of my other chunks there are just men. We're just normal men. What do you mean, normal men? We're just innocent men. <laughs> We've got the World Emblem Trader, as always. We've got General Store. We've got that Pirate Pete thingy. We don't just don't have Oziac, which is quite funny. Uh, one of the main things that we have here that I'm very excited for is the Amulet of Glory telly. Although I don't know why I just said that, because I obviously can't charge an Amulet of Glory. So I'm not happy for that, uh, as it turns out. We've got U-Seeds. Oh, we can get into Soul Wars this way now as well. Right, before we get too involved with anything in particular, shall we open up the 10 medium clues that we had left over from the Puro Puro grind? Um, I don't know. What, I, I mean, I basically just want spiked manacles, right? And that is not spiked manacles. <laughs> okay, right. Three. Oh, must. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. I thought that was uh, Morton Scrolls. Morton Scrolls would have been epic. Mostly harmless. Less so. That's where Trouble Brewing is, though. So that's kind of uh, iconic for this account, even though I've never been there. Uh, Addy Plate Skirt G, pretty cool fashion scape. Not too interesting, though. Adamant, Hel Hel Adamant H Helm 4. Again, not particularly great. Green Dragon Hide Body G. Again, not fantastic. Come on, give me something actually good. Oh, no collection log slots. Arceus Banner, oh, oh, as if it took so long to get these 10 caskets, and they're literally such sad loot. Come on, final three. Oh, that's actually quite a cool one. Bando's Cloak. Uh, I think that's the one you need for the medium clue, uh, not medium clue, master clue step, right? But also, I think that's my only Bando's item I have on the account, which could be useful for Wilderness God Wars Dungeon. Nothing from the penultimate one. And from the final one, surely we're going to get the Spike Manacles. <sighs> well, we tried. Bando's Cloak, though, that's actually pretty cool. Not, not, the rest of it's kind of meh, but that's actually quite a cool item. So, one of the tasks that I need to do in this chunk is, I believe, get the Edgeville respawn point, which I think costs me 5 mil GP. And I don't know why I spoke to that guy, because I've got absolutely... I absolutely don't know <laughs> if that's who gives it. Okay, this guy reckons it's Crystillia, Brewscape. So uh, let's talk to Crystillia and hope that it's from her. Uh, I need another assignment. No, not yet. Have you any rewards for me or anything to trade? No. I love your hat. She doesn't... There's no option here. Right. No one knows. I don't know. They don't know. No one knows. Okay, turns out I'm stupid, and it is Crystillia. Uh, okay, I need the option that is, what can you do apart from Slayer Master stuff? You see, that'll teach me for scan reading, won't it? Uh, quite a lot. There's stupid guards, blah, blah, blah. I actually like it to fix it so that when you respawn, you die, and you respawn in Edgeville. Uh, tell me more. Whenever you drop dead, I'll try to make you reappear in Edgeville. Yeah, sure, that's fine. One-off payment, five million coins. Okay, switch my respawn to Edgeville. There goes 5 million GP, but we now respawn in Edgeville, which is actually very cool. Varax Enclave is a cool location, but I feel like Edgeville is just slightly cooler. Edgeville is a really interesting chunk to get. There are three bosses in Edgeville, Obor, Briar Fighter, and Scurious. All three bring their own unique challenges, and I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into each of them. Multiple hundreds of hours of bossing content. What more can I ask for? Well, there is actually something potentially more interesting in this chunk. Slayer. And not just Slayer. Perpetual, fully unlocked Slayer. But first... Let's take a look at one of the Edgeville dungeon bosses, shall we? Let's start with the newest one, Scurious. Released in January of 2024, this boss is new and pretty cool. It has 500 hit points and is targeted at teaching newcomers to PVM how to prayer flick and other such like that. For me, what's relevant are the drops. The standard loot is kind of 
meh. A selection of low-value alks and a handful of runes. However, what are relevant to me are the two collection log slots that the boss drops. I will need to get both of these before moving on. The first is Scurious's Spine. This is dropped at a 1 in 33 rate and is used to create the Ratbane weapons. These weapons are drastically better than my current best in slot for fighting Scurious, and so I'll be looking to get multiple of these early so that I can make the Bone Mace, Shortbow and Staff, and therefore speed up my kills. Excess spines can also be turned in for combat XP, the most relevant for me being 3,500 prayer XP, so getting as many of these as possible will be great for me. The final collection log slot, however, is not one that I'm looking forward to. Scurry, the pet dropped by Scurious. It's a 1 in 3,000 drop, and so I'd better settle in for the long haul, as it's very likely that I'll be killing this boss for a while. Where the fuck do I go in? How do I get in? Right. Okay, so I can climb through private or I can climb through normal. I guess I probably want private, because apparently its hit points is way lower. So I guess we'll do that. But otherwise, let's just go into Scurious Blind. I have never seen anyone kill this, and I've never killed it myself. So this should be quite interesting. And there is our first Scurious kill. That was slightly painful, to be honest. Uh, I feel like it will be a lot better once we get our bone weapons, I think is what's the best way to do them. But we are a Scurious novice. Very nice. And there we go, we get our second combat task, Scurious's Champion, which I'm guessing is just a reward for doing 10, uh, 10 tasks. But yeah, I'm quite enjoying the boss so far. I hope I can get the Bone Spine, because I hear that the, uh, the Bone Mace makes this a lot, lot better. So that will be cool to get. But uh, yeah, 10kc down, possibly over 3,000 to go. Okay, so we are on our second... Scurious trip and I've brought some fantastic tech that I'm hoping is going to make things a lot easier. Oh, I just got a perfect Scurious. I'm guessing that means I didn't miss any prayer flicks or anything? Is what I'm guessing happened there? Nice. I am gaming. Yes! There it is. We have got the Scurious's spine and I very, very cleverly brought with me the rune mace and 50k so i can get this fella outside to uh to make it for me how do i get out oh, i cross the sewage water lovely right so apparently i can talk to this guy and he can make my rune mace into a bone mace uh can you make a bone weapon for me there we go and there is our bone mace. Now, what are the comparative stats on that? Uh, so, we'll take off our glory and we'll take off those because I think that's the only stats for it. 67 crush on that. And only 60 crush on that. But I'm guessing this has some kind of buff against Scurious, right? Surely. Oh yeah, this is so much better. My max hits up by like 5 or more. And I can one tick the rats, so I'm gonna take way less damage. Oh yeah, this is way better. Okay, I just got the uh, I just got the achievement sit rat. I don't really know what that was for, but we'll take it. Oh, that was so nice. Oh, that was nice. Efficient pest control, and I hit a 34 straight off it as well. That was like over 500 strength XP in like literally no time. Oh, I can 38 so when I'm potted up with the with the bone mace. That's nuts. This thing's so good. Oh, there we go. We just got our second Scurious Spine, which I believe what I'm going to do with that is attach that to a battle staff. And then that's going to be a way that I can do magic here. And apparently that's going to be better. Because I think my max hit with the staff is going to be 37. Which is basically the same as me using a super combat potion. But I wouldn't need to use a super combat potion. So I think that's probably what I'll do in the long run. Though I feel like it's probably worth it. Me just knocking out 99 strength. Just just, just cause really. Oh we just got another Scurious Spine. Scurious Spine number 3. 
Which means, I believe, well, I'm out of prayer right now, so I may as well leave, and I may as well go and make the staff and bow, because why not? Oh. <laughs> well, I was not expecting that to just one-click like that. Okay. And then, what, battle staff, I think, is the next one? Will I just use that as well? No, you need a thousand chaos rune. Oh my goodness, is it a charged staff? No way. That would be very epic if it was. You need a chisel? Okay, why don't you tell me that in the same message, goodness sake. Right. One more go. There we go. You attach the scary spine to the battle staff to create the bone staff. Check charges. Can I add more charges? No, come on. Let's try it. Oh, I can! Right, let's just add 19,000 charges to that. Let's <laughs> see if we've got a 20,000 charge staff. That's unbelievable. So, we are now going to try a different setup, and that is the mage setup. Now, I've got full Elder Chaos Druid, mostly for the swag points. Uh, but we've got this bone staff which has 20,000 charges in it, which is kind of mental. We've retained most of our prayer bonus because the soul cape and the ring of the gods are so overpowered. Uh, and I think this might be better because I don't need super combats for this. Uh, and also I should be like running around less, so it should just be kind of less painful to do. What the... Was it only me that saw that? What the hell was that? <laughs> um, but yeah, right, this is the new setup. Let's give it a go. Okay, yeah, safe to say that is better by country mile. I used seven prayer points and lost 17 hit points, <laughs> and it was faster as well. <laughs> so, yeah, safe to say that's definitely better. And there we are with our first 100 kill count at Scurious. Uh, I'm trying out the bossing info plugin and just seeing what my kills per hour is here. I think it's probably going to be quite comfortably in the 30s though. And if it's in the 30s, then that means the pet should take about 100 hours on average, which isn't too bad. Not fantastic, but not too bad. Oh, he's cooked it! 53 second kill with the range! That is bonkers. 40 kills per hour on the range hits. That is absolutely wild. And there is 200 KC at Scurious. We've got, I think, five or six uh, Scurious spines in total now. Uh, and it's a bit of a shame this boss doesn't have anything other than the spines and the pet. Because it feels like there should be some sort of middle ground reward there that's like a 1 in 500, but... Whatever. Onwards we go. Oh, and there is our first little long bone so far. 233kc. Really kind of rattling through it now. We're still on the we're still on the chunk rolling day. I've not done anything else. We're just scurious only chunk man now. Oh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> As if that just happened. As if that just happened. On 238 kill count. Uh, okay. We just got the pet. And our 100th collection log Scott slot. Okay. <laughs> Finally we're spooning things. We're spooning things. Scurious, green log, signed, sealed, and delivered. That's This is literally the day that I rolled the chunk. I've just been absolutely gaming, and as if I just got that pet. That is very, 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 very funny. <laughs> yes, yes. Why am I, why am I, why am I like this? All the way back in episode 4, 33 videos ago, I got locked out of Slayer. Mazchana gave me Earth Warriors as a task, an NPC that I didn't have access to. Well, until now. In Edgeville, I get access to Edgeville Dungeon. 
which seems pretty obvious based on the name. But alas, inside this dungeon, there are Earth Warriors, which gives me the chance to pick up Slayer again. Okay, and here we go, killing our first Earth Warrior. This is so thrilling. This is this is, might be top five most exciting things that have happened to me on this account. Oh, we also get a easy wilderness task for that. Very nice indeed. Oh my god, the back-to-back -back Ranar seeds. We are gaming. And with that Earth Warrior, I believe that is the end of our task. You've completed two tasks and need three more before you start receiving the Slayer points. I don't think that that is shares with the wilderness task but maybe i'm wrong now you may still be wondering what makes edgeville different with regards to slayer how can i unlock perpetual slayer here i don't have access to every single monster that a single slayer master can give right yes that is right however the answer is this lovely lady christilia christilia is a slayer master that only gives tasks in the wilderness I have a reasonable amount of the wilderness unlocked, but certainly not all of it. So again, how can I unlock Slayer here? The answer is Slayer points. Slayer points can unlock a whole myriad of things, ranging from cosmetic recolors to useful teleports through to task extensions. However, what we're interested in is the ability to skip tasks. Skipping a task costs 30 Slayer Points, which doesn't sound like a lot. However, Mas Channa, for example, the only Slayer Master I've had access to on Canifis Chunk until now, only gives two Slayer Points per task. This means that, on average, I would need to be able to complete 93.7% of his available tasks to be able to self-sustain enough skips to be able to not get locked out of Slayer. I can only complete 46% of Maz Channa tasks within my chunks, and so Slayer has always been off the cards. Crystillia, however, gives 25 points per task. This means that I only need to be able to complete 54% of Crystillia tasks to be able to sustain on average. And I have 64% of her tasks available within my chunks. Slayer is unlocked forever! Well, no. There are two major hurdles before we can reach this utopia. The first is that you only start getting Slayer points from your sixth task onwards. You do your first five for free. At 25 points per task after this point, this means that I need to hit the 64% chance at a task that I can do seven times in a row before I can get a single skip. This rapidly becomes a very brutal RNG check. 64% of 100 is 64%. 64% of 64% is 41%. And 64% of that 41% is 26%. And so on and so on until we hit a 4.3% chance of doing seven Crystillia tasks in a row. Suddenly my fantastic odds of starting Slayer have become not so fantastic. Additionally, there is another issue lying in wait for me. The Medium Varrock Diary. On the Medium Varrock Diary, there is a task to get a Slayer task from Vanica. And you may remember back in episode 1 when detailing the rules that I said Complete all quests and diaries as much as is possible. This means that getting a task from Vanica is essentially non-negotiable. And this could be a huge problem for me. I can only complete 42% of Vanica tasks. Meaning that I have a 58% chance of getting locked out of Slayer again without even getting a task from Crystalia at all. Additionally, some of these tasks are terrible. Crocodiles, seven chunks away in a straight line as a bare minimum. Cockatrice and basilisks, 12 chunks away in a straight line. These tasks would be Slayer Nukers. It is no exaggeration. If I get locked out of Slayer from one of these tasks, I'm probably looking at being locked out of Slayer for anywhere from 5 to 10 years. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Roll the clip. Okay, so after having done the maths... Uh, nearly just misclicked it. I think it is... 
the right decision to risk the Vanica task. Now, this one click is going to be one of the more impactful clicks that I've ever done in this game. If we get something we can do, we can just do Crystillia until we run out, until we either get locked out of Slayer, or we can do Slayer to 85. Could go either way. Or, <laughs> option B, is that we get the Vanica task, and it is something in the middle of nowhere that we cannot do, and we're screwed. So hopefully we can avoid Cockatrice, Basilisk, Crocodiles, anything like that. And hopefully we get something interesting. Oh, okay, right. Let's click it. Assignment Vanica. Three, two, one. Let's go. Now you guys can't see it. Oh! It shades. And I think that's one we can do, right? I think Shades is one that we can do. <laughs> oh, is that right? I think Shades we can do in Morton. In Morton. Okay, okay, okay. I need to go and search that task up and have a look. Right, let's have a look. Oh. Okay, we got 57 Shades, but also we did do the medium Varrock task. So that means that one is officially done. So we can now never go to Vanica again. And essentially, we can just do Crystillia until we run out of, uh, of tasks that we can do and we get locked out. We'll probably get locked out with something in the Wildy Slayer Caves, which is only one chunk away. But essentially, we've beat the massive RNG check that we need to, be that we need to beat. It was a 57.5% chance that we couldn't do the task with like 20% of that locking us out of Slayer for like four years. So getting this is absolutely massive. Okay, so we are in Morton and I'm hoping that without having done the Shades of Morton quest, I can kill these Lore Shades. Okay, it's a good sign that I can hit them. Do they die? And do I get the XP? Please, please die, and please give me- Okay, yeah, right. So we can officially do this Slayer task. Oh, I'm so happy. It's, un it's unbelievable how happy I am right now. And there is 41 Slayer. The first Slayer level we've had in a little while. Definitely the first Slayer level we've had for a little while that is actually from killing a Slayer mob. I'm so unbelievably happy I passed that RNG check. Can you imagine if I just got Basilisk or Crocodiles or something? I would be so upset. But right now, oh, I'm so happy. Okay, and with that death, we have done it. 57 shades. Sadly, no points. But it is time to go to Crystillia and get our first wilderness task. And hopefully, it is one we can do. The worst RNG check is completed. We were able to do our Vanica task. Now it's just time to see what Crystillia task we get and if we can continue. Let's quickly look at our Crystillia Slayer task tier list before we do though. S tier, tasks we can do right now. Part of the 64% and what we want the most. If we can get seven of these in a row, we can probably just start Slayer here and now. A tier, tasks that we can do within one chunk, but not right now. For example, creatures in the wilderness Slayer caves that will be rollable next time we roll. Uh, something like hell giants and ice giants. B tier, tasks that we'd be able to do within two chunk rolls. I'm looking at you, Greater Demons. C tier, tasks available in three perfect chunk rolls. This is basically just Ice Warriors and Magical Axes. And then, last but not least, the worst task that I can roll. And we'll skip straight to F tier for this because it stands for Fire Giants. Only accessible in the deep wilderness dungeon, five perfect chunk rolls away. Ideally, if I'm going to hit the 36% and get locked out of Slayer via Crystillia, we desperately want it to be a task from the A tier, so that we can continue relatively quickly. Let's see what we got.
Okay, the time is upon us for us to get our first Crystalia task. I don't necessarily expect to get the seven in a row that we need to, like, properly get Slayer going. But it would be very nice if I don't get locked out by something really annoying. Well, the tasks we're trying to avoid are Fire Giants, which are in this chunk, and Ice Warriors, which are in uh, this chunk here. Oh no, sorry, this chunk here. If we can avoid those, the rest of them are not too bad. You know, like, uh, we could get something that's in the Wildy, uh, the Wildy God Wars Dungeon Cave, that would be mostly okay. Or we could get something that's in the Wildy Slayer Cave, which is either of these two chunks. Either of those I wouldn't be too mad about. But essentially we want to be avoiding Rogues, Magical Axes, Fire Giants, and Ice Warriors. Anything else would be good. Something doable would be better. 3, 2, 1... Let's grab this task. Oh, before I can assign you anything, I want to make something clear. My task can only be done in the wilderness. I don't check combat levels when choosing tasks either. So even if other masters won't assign you tough monsters, I'll pick anything for which you have the Slayer level, provided you can physically get to it. She doesn't know about my restrictions. If you don't like my tasks, go and see Terrell in Borthorp and ask him to assign you something else. He won't argue. Sadly, <laughs> I don't have Terrell in Borthorp, so that's not an option. You might get a few unusual loot drops while you're on my assignments if you're lucky. So do you want me to assign you something? Yes, I understand. I must kill it in the wilderness. Here we go. 79 Earth Warriors. Right, the first task we can definitely do. Let's go. Uh, Earth Warriors are definitely quite a good task. That is 42 Slayer, which unlocks a Fever Spiders. I don't think that's relevant for us doing Crystalia Slayer. But 54 XP per one, and I got 79. That's like over 4k XP. That's kind of nuts. Uh, but we've got 42. That'll be the last one we get on this task, and then we'll be hitting the gambling simulator again. And with this Earth Warrior, it is the end of the task. Good task. 3.5k, 3.4k once we kill it to go until level 43 and we get one wilderness task. You need four more before you start receiving Slayer points. Obviously seven tasks is where we want to get to, so it's not massively likely, but hopefully we will get there. Okay, it is time to grab our second Crystalia task. Please, let's get some RNG. Just no magical axes or fire giants or rogues or anything like that. Come on. Oh! No, God, please, no! 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 Oh, that's like the worst one. That's like literally the worst one. Oh, no. No, that's so bad. We have to get this chunk here for the deep wilderness dungeon which means we need to get like up there so we need nothing here scorpia wilderness resource area mage arena <laughs> and then deep wilderness that would be really brutal i guess we could go this way as well but i mean that's still six chunks oh that's painful that is painful, but the one thing to bear in mind is that is still a lot closer than had we got, um, like, Basilisks or something, because Basilisks would have been all the way over here, and that would have just never happened. So all we need to do is basically unlock the rest of the wilderness, and then we're good to go. Oh, that's so painful. <laughs> Why couldn't it have been something in the Wilderness Slayer Cave? No! Sadly... We got locked out of Slayer, but we did get up to 42 Slayer, which means I can equip Slayer Gloves. So I'll buy some of those and equip them. And that is me having done the Slayer task that we can do, which is 42 Slayer for that. Oh, I'm so gutted about uh, Fire Giants, but it can't be helped. RNG is uh, a cruel mistress sometimes. Well, <laughs> safe to say that couldn't have gone much worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Uh, onwards and upwards to Obor. Obor is the hill giant boss and is actually a free to play boss, interestingly enough. Released in October of 2016, this boss was added to build upon the nostalgia of your childhood. 
I remember spending countless hours down in the Hill Giants cave near the Grand Exchange, grinding big bones to sell for 40k GP per hour. <sighs> good times, good times. Anyway, the boss boasts 120 hit points and has one collection log slot, the Hill Giant Club, which drops at a rate of 1 in 118. You may be looking at this and thinking, oh, that's not too bad. And you'd be right, it's not. I've got nearly maxed combat stats and Obor won't be too tough for me. However, what is bad is that you can only access Obor with a giant key and you need a giant key for every kill count. Any guesses on how you get giant keys? Of course, killing an abundance of hill giants. Hill giants drop these keys at a rate of 1 in 128, which means that to get the hill giant club drop rate of 118 obor kills, I'm going to need to kill more than 15,000 hill giants. Thanks for that one, Jagex. Grabbing this key here... The Brass Key is one of the most nostalgic things to me in the game. The Brass Key. I remember having to use this thing over here. Now, I can't go up this ladder on this account. But going up, this up and down this ladder is the single most nostalgic thing for me on this entire game. Like, ugh, I remember spending so many hours as a kid here killing these hill giants for 40k GP per hour selling the big bones at the GE. Oh, what a childhood. What a childhood that was. This is definitely, like, the most nostalgic thing to do in the game for me. Like, not only did I do this when I was a kid in, like, 2005 or whatever, but I also did this when I came back to the game in 2015. So it's, like, ultimate nostalgia for me. And if I'm a very clever editor, I'm going to put the music track in the background, which is, like... Just the one that I always used to play whilst I was down here, and it's just peak, so peak. This is peak childhood right here. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. In the wilderness, the drop rate of giant keys is improved to 1 in 64 instead of 1 in 128. And luckily, I do have access to the wilderness hill giants. So, let's get to it. Right, so this is the other place where we're going to try for the hill giants. And essentially what I'm going to do is kill these two, hop world, and then just try again. Is essentially the idea that's kind of going through my head. Uh, in theory, this should be better because of the 1 in 64 rate, but we'll have to just give it a try. So I'm getting 50k range XP per hour doing this. Um, which basically means that I'm getting similar kills per hour as I was meleeing them in the caves. But obviously the rate is doubled. So essentially that means that I'm getting... 50% more keys doing this, well, no, like 100% more keys doing them in the wilderness here with this method than I was in the in the cave in Edgeville Dungeon, which I don't think is too surprising. It's also not that great. <laughs> uh, it probably means I'm getting like five, six kills, per, uh, five or six keys per hour instead of three. Uh, but I guess what that means is essentially the grind, this grind, the Obor grind, should take 20, 20 hours on average. I guess that's not too bad. I could do that today. I could, that means I could get like 120 Obor kills today if I wanted to. And there is 82 defense during the giant key grind. We're going very, very dry at the minute. I've got like 300 hill giants and got one key. So it's a rather bleak situation to be in, but hopefully uh, that will turn around and we'll get like five back to back. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, so we've managed to stack up eight giant keys, and I think it is now time to have our first go at Obor and see if we can spoon ourselves anything exciting. We've got the Entangles, we've got the, uh, we've got the Accursed Scepter, let's just give it a go. Okay, there was our first Obor kill, that was very, very easy with my gear and stats. Uh, got some nice cosmic runes from it, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, there we go. Couple of the medium combat tasks with that one. 
Uh, I believe those are the ones that you get for like running around the room and not getting hit back and stuff like that. So that's pretty good to get those done. And I think the rest of them are just like kill count tasks and stuff like that. So let's have a quick look. Uh, view the boss list. Let's go down to Obor. Three to go. Right, what do we need to do? Kill Obor on a free-to-play world. Well, I can't do that at the minute. Kill Obor whilst he is immobilized. And kill Obor five times. I swear I did just kill him whilst he was immobilized. I guess maybe I need to, like, immobilize him just before I kill him. So next time I'll try and do that. All right, there we go. He's immobilized. Surely this one's going to count. Surely that counts as immobilized. Yes, there we go. Right, and now we just need to do kill count tasks, I think, right? I think. And there is our fifth kill. Sadly, no Obor Club, but we only need to kill the boss on free to play now, and then we can uh, we can be all done with all the combat tasks that we can do in the chunk, which sadly means uh, that we're not going to get the easies done. Oh, that's annoying. That's so annoying, because that would have been really cool. Oh, well, maybe in the next chunk. Nah. No Obor Club from the first set. Sad. Very sad. <laughs> I said that like Donald Trump. Very sad, very sad. Okay, finally the key RNG is coming in. Oh! Back to back keys! Back to back keys! That's the first time I've had back to back keys. I'm so sad it wasn't in the same world though. Oh, if that had been in the same world, that would have been so iconic. Nice though, back to back. Things you love to see. Oh, the double battle, the double one hit. Things you love to see. A cursed scepter goes insanely hard. And I've taken my prep for potentially getting a farming chunk at some point to the next level and have decided to start doing some wild blood hops. And there is 37 farming. Really kind of getting up there now. The main goal is to get to 57 so that we can just straight away do our yew trees as soon as we unlock the Varrot Palace trunk. Uh, but definitely kind of getting up there. And every one of these runs is like, I don't know, 150 to like 300 XP, which is actually pretty good considering I can do them like nearly every hour. So I'm going to try and keep up with these consistently. Okay, so the only combat achievement that we still need to do for Obor is... To do the free to play kill. So we're going to try and do that now. Looks like I can't use entangle. I can only use snare. And I ba and ba none of this gear actually does anything. Because it's all just members objects. Uh, so we're basically just doing it naked with a staff. Uh, let's hope it goes okay. Because I only brought six swordfish. Uh, yeah let's hope that works. Go on then. Get me the hill giant club. Ah sad. But that is the... Uh, that is the combat tasks for Obor completed. Next unlock in two points. Sadly, we can't do those. Fry Fighter done. Uh, Obor done. And Skirius done. So that's all the combat achievements we could possibly do in this chunk done. So I think I've developed the perfect Obor method. So I go down. I entangle him there. I run off. I hit him a bit. Uh, and then basically, because I'm using a four tick staff... Uh, he'll never get to me because I should do over half the damage just from these hits. He's going to move after that hit. And then I entangle again. And he isn't in melee range now, so he still can't melee me. And because he's like way less than half and the DPS that I've got with the staff, I'll just kill him again before he gets to me. So this way I should never really be in melee range of Obor except that initial bit where you first do it. So that, pretty cool. Oh, right. 50 kill count at Obor, no club yet. If I'm going to go dry on one of these bosses, I do hope it's this one. But, yeah, damn, damn. Right, back to the hill giants. Oh, and there it is. Hill giant club acquired. Very nice, very nice. Only six keys to go. Huge, huge. The spoon, the spoon is real. 64 kill count. 
I guess we may as well use the rest of our giant's keys and just uh, see what else we can get. But there is the hill giant club. Does it look any good? Not at all, but very cool item to get. Love that. Love that. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my god why am i just so iconic why am i just so iconic four kills later second club <laughs> i thought i'd just finish off the keys Oh, that's so funny. Oh, two clubs. They're all fuming. They're all like posting their Obor kill count. That was only when I'd got one. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Right, let's give, give this little club a, club a go, shall we? Oh, it's kind of an epic animation though. Look at that. Oh, it's like an obby mall. That's so funny. I literally did not know that that was the animation. Why am I doing... Why is our heel giant doing more damage to me than I am to it? <laughs> oh. Right. Cool item, I guess. Nice. Nice. Happy with that. No third club. Why am I never lucky? Well, it looks like I have pulled out my spoon for this chunk thus far. Two clubs is also very funny because the clan chat was so mad at me. However, our toughest grind is still to come. Briar Fighter. Briar Fighter was released in May 2018 and again is a relatively easy boss to kill with 115 hit points and some pretty easy mechanics. However, like Obor, it's a key boss. Mossy keys are dropped at a rate of 1 in 150 from Moss Giants, and unlike the Hill Giants, I do not have access to the Wilderness Moss Giants. Those fellas are just one chunk too far north of my available chunks, so we're going to have to lock in on the regular ones, roll our sleeves up, and just get stuck into the grind the old-fashioned way. Ah, oh, there we go, Mossy Key, things you love to see. That's pretty good. Oh! Back to back Mossy Keys! That's the first time that has, that's happened. That's a 1 in 160. The back to back is crazy. Okay, so now that we've got the Obors Club, it's basically just the Briar Fighter's Essence and a little bit of other junk to go uh, to finish off this chunk. It's been quicker than I expected it to be thus far. Uh, but one thing I did just think is that these rune knives should actually be really good DPS out of the wilderness. So I'm going to give them a go and just use them, see, see what's what. Uh, and also, I've got four mossy keys stacked up, so I may as well just go ahead and use them straight away before doing any more moss giants. And I've got a Sanfu serum, which actually acts as poison immunity. So Briar Fighter isn't as bad as I thought. It feels kind of wrong using Sanfu serums. Uh, as an anti-poison and a boss as lame as Briar Fighter, but I guess it helps with the poison. And an eight poison, avoiding that is nice. Oh my god, look at the fucking shred on these rune knives. What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> it didn't even spawn any minions. Oh my god. These things are fucking unbelievable. I thought that was it. <gasps> oh, my heart just jumped out its chest with the mossy key there because I was like expecting to see red when it's the Briar's Essence because it's so valuable. Oh my god, my heart just jumped out my chest. Whoa, look at this credit card warrior. That's the most credit card warrior that ever credit card warriored. Wow, full dragon, dragon full helm and everything. God sword main hand weapon. That's crazy. Ah, oh, I was just checking my collection log to see how many spores of war I opened. And I got a curved bone. Why can I not just get 
Why can I not just get Mossy Keys? One in 5,013 there on the curved bone. That is rather upsetting, isn't it? And with this cast of Firewave, there is 99 magic on the extreme one chunk Iron Man. A fourth 99. Likely our next one is going to be 99 attack, I guess. But we can't predict the future. 99 magic. The combat stats, the combat stats look insane. The non-combat stats, definitely a bit more spotty. Um, you know, highs and lows over there. But the combat stats are balling. Woo, I see the new curved bone. Nice construction experience, hopefully. Maybe. Although, I feel like I probably need prayer XP more than construction XP, right? Yeah, I'd say I definitely need prayer XP more. 15 prayer XP. I'd say that was worth it. How many people did that just upset? <laughs> and there is 83 defense and 119 combat. 119 combat. That actually seems kind of crazy, eh? Yeah, we're balling. We're balling. We, I mean, with that prayer level, I guess I'm going to... If I get 99 defense, 99 attack, I guess I'm going to cap out at... 124 combat, I think? That's kind of crazy. <gasps> we finally broke it. We finally broke the 550 moss giant uh, dry streak to get a mossy key. I feel sick. 550 kills to get one mossy key. This is why this grind is so brutal. Over two and a half hours to get a single mossy key. Ridiculous. And there is 40 farming. It took a little while to get... Just getting the passive farming levels in anticipation of getting the, uh, the Varrock Palace chunk and the tree patch at some point. I guess also, we're not that far away from the tree patch over in Tavoli either. Only really two chunk rolls, so that wouldn't be too unlikely either. And I think just getting as close as we can to level 57 so that we can start planting the YouTube straight away is definitely a good idea. Oh, and there it is. We just got a second curved bone from the Moss Giants in 5,000 kill count. Why couldn't that have just been a Mossy Key? Okay, here we are coming in with 50 Briar Fighter kills. No essence again, but we're getting that kill count up fairly rapidly. Like 50 Briar Fighters, you know, on average, that's 7,500 Moss Giants. That is bonkers. Go on. Oh! Oh! <laughs> we actually got it. We actually got it. Let's go. 13.1 mils worth of Briar Fighter's Essence. Oh my golly gosh. There we go. Signed, sealed, and delivered. 55 kill count. <laughs> we just can't stop spooning. Uh, what is this? As if. As if that just happened. Still got five keys to go. Can we back to back it like we did with the Obors Club? <laughs> oh my goodness. We are going hard right now. That's crazy. I actually can't believe I just got that. I actually just can't believe that. Go on, back to back, just for the absolute bans. Nah, oh, never lucky. Why am I never lucky? Okay, so we are officially out of Mossy Keys. We did not get a second Briar Fighter's Essence. So, yeah, official to say that I am no longer lucky. Um, I must be one of the least lucky YouTubers ever, I think. Uh, but yeah, so we got the Briar Fire's Essence, and now we just need to go and tick off some of the slightly easier tasks in the chunk, because all three of the main goals have been done, and have been done in less than a week. The RNG has been insane. I am finally, I have finally been rewarded for my dry streaks 
at Vetian and my dry streaks at the Revenant Caves with one of the most insane runs in the Edgeville chunk that I think the game has ever seen. But yeah, let's get on with those uh, remaining tasks. I am in shock. This account has never been great with RNG. 75,000 Revenants and being rank 6 on the Vetion high scores with 4,500 kill count is a testament to that. However, in this chunk, in Edgeville, we called in all of our RNG and got lucky on all of the major grinds. This was absolutely insane, especially considering that I did the entire thing live on kick during one subathon. A subathon that has had to be put on pause so that I could release this video due to all of the spooning. Honestly, so crazy. I am so so happy. I would also like to say that Limpwort went out of his way to beat my range at XP after I hit rank 1 a few videos ago. And so this is my response. Rest in peace Limpwort and enjoy the chunk. Bye bye. Now, there are still a few smaller goals to knock out and so I'll just go and finish those up and then I'll be back with another chunk roll. So, I believe I can actually make the staff, which I think is essentially a staff of nature, right? So if I attach Bryo Essence to the battle staff... Oh, that was a tidy little animation, wasn't it? Right, got uh, Bryo Fighter Staff uncharged. I think what you charge this with is nature runes, right? Uh, yes, so I now have a, a charged Bryo Fighter Staff, and uh, what this does is help you save nature runes, which is actually relatively helpful for me, because I do have a very large stack of runes, but nature's is one that I don't actually have that many of. 12,500 seems like a lot, but in relation to, like, the smithing grind and potentially all the alks that I'll have to do at points in the future, it's not that many. So having this staff that helps save some of the charges, pretty nice. And it looks pretty cool. Right, so I believe the next task that I have to do is make a whacker canoe, and I think I do this here. So I shape that, I think I just need an axe. Make whacker, probably should have brought my rune axe with me. Oh, well that was easy. Uh, I don't think that I can actually take that anywhere into the wilderness, right? Can I? I think it can go to different places, so I guess I can just have a look. So it goes to Barbarian Village. Oh, it goes to Farrakh's Enclave. That's quite cool, actually. And it goes to Lumbridge. But I don't think I've got the Lumbridge station for it. I don't think I'm far enough south for that. Uh, where's the station near Lumbridge? Uh, yeah, it's there. Ah, oh, that would have been cool. Because I've got, like, no means to... I've got no teleports, essentially. I can teleport to Varrock, and that's it. Oh, I guess I can teleport to Farrakh's Enclave as well. But aside from that, I've got nothing. I'm desperate for some kind of teleport method over to Mauritania. That would be insane. Okay, so one of the last tasks that we have is to pick up red spider's eggs. A little known fact, you can just pick up and drop the same one over and over again. I do not need them, so that works. Uh, and then we need to go around here and do the earth, uh, the earth enchant, the earth enchant, earth orb enchant. And the air one. I believe the earth one's over here. Yeah, there is the obelisk. Cast our spell on the obelisk. Is it what you... No, 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 no. Okay, we're now poisoned as well, so that's good. Uh, what I don't want to do is do every single one of my orbs, because that will... Can we... This is the earth obelisk. I'm going to go mental. I've got no food with me. One. There we go. Okay, medium task done. Life is good. Krona's on. Leave us alone, please, pal. Black demon's over here as well. Why can't I got a black demon slayer task? That would have been nice. A. Uh, and then lastly, cast charge air orb on here. And that is every single task in the Edgeville chunk completed. Signed, sealed, and delivered. I would say what a chunk it's been, but it really didn't take that long. <laughs> but it was a cool chunk anyway. It was one that we wanted. 
Um, so it was nice to get it. It was nice to celebrate after getting a chunk rather than being upset for once. Um, so yeah, that was cool. And I guess... I don't know whether I'm going to end the video here or we're going to go to the chunk picker. One of those two things is going to happen. Okay, okay, okay. I am feeling so nervous. Edgeville is done. 14 out of 14. Let's go. Okay, okay. I think that's nothing. I think that's nothing. Okay, right. Let's go... Uh... Oh my god, one away from Barbarian Village. I'm pretty sure Barbarian Village is a death junk. Oh, let's go. Okay, so we are nearly here. Now, this is actually a relatively frequented spot on Cannabis Junk, with the Vetian Cave being just there. That is obviously somewhere we have spent a lot of time. Lava Dragon's just over there also. But we are heading to this northern border to unlock our new chunk i mean we're getting very very close to the far far north now i mean we're only one away the scorpia caves away i mean that's kind of brutal <laughs> i can't really imagine how scorpia would go but let's unlock this chunk and head on in now according to the chunk picker there's nothing here we do uh, do we i think yeah yeah so i do have the gate to get into lava dragons so uh, I guess that's cool, although not very relevant for us seeing as we do have that southern agility crossing. Though I guess if you didn't have agility and you unlocked that gate, that would let you into Lava Dragons and give you the Draconic Visage task. So I guess that would be relatively interesting had I not already got a Draconic Visage. But what's that? Oh, I think it's just Tile Marker. I thought that was like a ghost or something. Um, so yeah, we do have this gate though, which is definitely a way to get into that far northern area of the wilderness we do have to uh do scorpia if we're going to go through that gate and go anywhere else and i don't really know how that would go seeing as it poisons you for 20s it's in multi and it's a very very frequented uh pking spot but it is at least an option i guess and we're only like what oh that could be quite a cool teleport actually wouldn't it um because I could, uh, if I got the Wildy Lever, I could teleport there from Edgeville. That would be pretty cool, actually, for, like, getting to Vertion and stuff like that. Um, but there's not much here. It's just sort of dirt and trees and a gate. So, ooh. No, okay. I was like, oh, you know, maybe I could shoot Hellhounds over here. But I don't think you can shoot over this... Uh, over this fencing in the wilderness, I would kind of defeat the point, because I think it's to split the wilderness, like the members area away from the free-to-play area. Uh, yeah, okay, right. Scorpio we're closer to. I guess we're closer to our Slayer task as well, uh, of the Fire Giants, but yeah, let's go back to Chunk Picker. Okay, we are back in the Chunk Picker, and with some pretty cool additions, actually. Uh, 9, 13, and 18 at the top there are the new chunks, and 13 is Scorpia, and 9 is the Demonic Ruins of Greater Demons, which would be pretty cool for our long-term Slayer. Scorpia would be pretty awesome. 9 is also... Oh, 9 is also Callisto! Oh, oh my god, right, that'd be exciting. Uh, 18, I don't think that's anything, but... Let's just roll. Oh, God. No fucking way. No fucking way. <gasps> Tune in next time to see the new chunk roll. But if you cannot wait and you want spoilers, then swing by my live stream at kick.com forward slash fray rs i'm live right now as you're watching this video so just click the link to the stream in the description if you are really desperate to see where i ended up otherwise thank you for watching and a massive shout out to the channel members especially our highest tier members patrick wright jean scallon mike moran and fuchless i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope to see you in the next one bye bye